Rainbow Vision Network. A radio show reaching beyond the limitations of our minds and beliefs into a world of inspiration and empowerment where the impossible is possible. To talk directly to the host or guest, call 347-637-2650 and press 1. 347-637-2650 and press 1. To learn more about your host, Betsy, and her new riveting book, Angels, Aliens, and Prophecy, as well as breaking Earth news worldwide, go to BetsyLewis.com. B-E-T-S-E-Y-L-E-W-I-S dot com. And now your host, author, intuitive, earth keeper, and earth mysteries investigator, Betsy Lewis. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the show on this Wednesday, September 26, 2012. And if you're listening live from Australia, it's Thursday morning, and welcome. I have a very special guest today. It's Judy Carroll from Australia, and Judy is an ET experiencer who has had contact. <laughs> it's lovely to be here, Betsy. Thank you. Thank you. So how are you doing over in Australia? Where are you in Australia? I'm actually in Queensland, Betsy, so um, we're just starting in spring here, so we've got a beautiful day with very, very comfortable temperatures. Wow. Oh, great, great. Well, I read your book, Fascinating, Extraordinary Experiences. So let's go back <laughs> to the beginning of your experiences because they're just so amazing. And, you know, I could relate to so much of what you said as a child because I've had my right. own experiences. So talk about your experiences. Okay. Betsy, well, um, I, it was quite funny because I was actually brought up Catholic. I was educated in a convent. Um mm-hmm. But all through my childhood, I was aware that there was something else going on sort of behind the scenes. It was like there was two brains in my head, and one was living a normal human life, and the other one was going off somewhere and being contacted by other beings that used to come into our house at night. And um, being a child, I was fairly scared of the whole thing at that stage, as many people are who have contact. Um, Mm -hmm. But it all changed for me at um, age 30 when I had a fully conscious contact and it was like, um, oh, it was almost like a a button was pressed that sort of turned me on and helped me to understand that, you know, they're actually family and I've got a very deep connection with the Zetas. Well, that's incredible. Now, now I know you mentioned that you always felt that that Earth wasn't your home and, and just that you didn't feel this, was right your parents were your parents right yes 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 it wasn't quite to that extent um but it was just always i knew that there was something more i mean i felt comfortable Mm -hmm. with my parents i didn't think i was adopted or anything but there was just something in the edge of my mind that i knew that i wasn't from here um i've never felt really comfortable on planet earth let's put it that way i can relate to that judy for sure (laughs) Oh, my gosh, yes. So um, now you were a flamingo dancer. Are you still doing that? And and into Tai Chi, too, right? And Reiki? Uh, Yes, Yes, I retired from the flamenco many years ago. Actually, I think my last performance was about 1999, so I haven't done that um, for quite a while. But, um, yes, I now teach Reiki and I teach Tai Chi. It it was quite interesting because when I had my full-on encounter back in 1983, because I had been a professional dancer, I was a very physical type of person, and um, during that encounter, the Zetas told me that I needed to go along and learn meditation. And they actually told me to go first to learn Tai Chi because it would be a bridge for a very physically oriented person to be able to meditate. And back then in Australia, we hardly even knew what Tai Chi was. Um, I, I was vaguely aware of it, some sort of Chinese exercise, and that's all. Um, and it wasn't until circum- circumstances would change vastly over the next couple of years, um, as the Zetas had told me they would be, and um, by sheer coincidence I uh, managed to get into a Tai Chi class, and, and it was only at that class I found out it was actually moving meditation. Mm-hmm. I can imagine that really helped you go into a, a state of, of meditation so much easier. Even the flamingo dancing, right? That helped you also. 
Yes, well, it did because it was a wonderful way to balance both left and right hemispheres of the brain. Um, and I mm-hmm. found that in my connection with the Zetas, this has been really important because um, they send messages through. So I'm able to go into meditation or at least into an alternative state to be able mm-hmm. to pick up on their messages, but I'm still able to retain enough left brain to write them down. Wow. Now, I know that Helene has played a big part in your life and and probably your soul sisters, but um, tell us about the experiences that started happening in her family. Um, There was just a lot of strange things. Her son was having terrifying nightmares. Talk about that. What, What was that all about? Yes, that was very, very interesting, Betsy. Um, We were actually introduced by a mutual friend. Actually, he was our our Reiki teacher back in 2000. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I'd never met Helene. And um, strange activity started happening in their home, and it seemed to be directed at their two children, Ben, who was aged about seven at the time, and and Kira, the daughter, who was about 12. And they started seeing these black-clad figures standing in the corner of their bedrooms at night. And, of course, they were absolutely terrified. Um, and, in fact, one night, Ben woke up screaming, which, which was actually happening on a fairly regular basis, and Helene's husband ran in to check, and he almost collided with one of these beings in their hallway. Oh, my Oh, wow. So they knew that it wasn't just imagination or scary dreams on the part of the children. And at the same time, other weird stuff was happening in their house. Um, On one occasion, a dog materialised inside their house. Um, They actually owned a dog, but their own dog was locked out at the time. And this dog materialised inside the closed house and disappeared into the son's room. And when they went in to check, it it was no sign of of it. It just disappeared. Uh, They were seeing flashing lights through their skylight, beeping noises. Um, The boy used to go into these strange sort of trance states where he'd be seeing and communicating with an invisible presence in the room. Anyway, this mutual friend, our our Reiki teacher, knew that I'd been having experiences, so he gave Helene my number, and uh, she called the next day, and by the description, I I could tell it was um, our our Zeta friends coming to see them, and um, so I I stayed in regular contact with her and um, just explained to her, look, it's fine, there's nothing to be scared of, and after a while they became quite comfortable about the whole thing and over the following year the activity increased dramatically and their daughter Kira eventually was able to establish fully conscious communication with one of the tall Zetas who she came to know as Aurus and so it all sort of took off from there. Now it's interesting that you didn't think it was poltergeist activity and right away that you felt that it was the Zetas why did you think that? Yes, well, what actually happened, Betsy, um, my, the, the, the Reiki teacher um, went into their home before they contacted me. He went back to their home and did a Reiki cleanse on the house because that was exactly what they thought. It was poltergeist sure. activity or, you know, negative entity or something, as you do when things mm-hmm. like that start happening. So he went to their home and did a Reiki cleanse on the place, which we were doing at, on regular basis, uh, basic, basics. Um, these... Reiki type cleansers will clear out negative negative type entities and ghosts and things. I've used it many times to do this. And anyway, what happened um, when he did this, the um, activity increased. And when he told me that, that was actually what twigged my mind. And I thought, ah, it sounds like the Zetas, because of course they absolutely love any type of positive energy like Reiki, and it was actually drawing them in stronger. Mm, interesting. Now, had you had any of this um, activity going on in your own home? Um, yes, not quite to the um, level that they were having it. Um, I tend to sort of go off and do things myself. Um, uh, what happens with me when I'm doing talks or anything, they tend to come and overshadow me. And um, oh, I've had a number of clairvoyants in the audience come up and and say, oh, are you, are you aware you've got one of the grey tees with you? So that's sort of been more my experience. Also, when I'm going up on the disc, I remember working alongside them, so I've got quite a lot of memories along those lines. Interesting. Now, 
tell us about the grays, because I know a lot of people have seen a lot of different types of grays. They're the small grays that are kind of robotic. They are taller grays. Are, are they all related, and are they all benevolent? Um, and then I know there's just other beings out there that people have seen. So talk about all these different beings out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, my experience has been solely with the greys, so I can't go into mm-hmm. a great amount of detail about the others, but I am very aware that there are many, many different ones visiting here. Um, I know some people have uh, connections with the Pleiadians, and um, there's diff- oh, many, many different groups. And they all do tend to work together up to a point. Um, the greys, there are many, many different types of greys. Um, all are benevolent. There are none here who are trying to hurt us, people. And in fact, they're actually here assisting us with our evolution. That, that's their job in the universe, is to assist with evolution. They work with energy. Um, they, they have come up through different star systems. The main, main system they come from is the Zeta Reticular system, but they come from other star systems as well. And... Um, there's not just greys, there are many different colours. You can get blacks and reds and all that, so the, the, that name is oh. a little bit off-putting. Mm-hmm. So, um, yes, they're, and also they're not just a physical race of extraterrestrials. This is where people get a bit confused. Many many researchers go in looking for physical scientific evidence, but the ET contact, particularly with the greys, is actually of a higher frequency so it's more a mind experience rather than a physical experience. And so this is why there's not a lot of physical evidence of contact in connection with them. Now, now it's interesting that, you know, there, there's many people out there that are channeling supposedly the Zetas. Um, Nancy Leader is one of them. And they are supposed to be from Zeta Reticuli. And yeah. Are, are they from parallel or dimensional worlds, or are they from another planet? Um, you know. Yeah. Well. Well. Universe. The main group, yes. Yes. The main group are from Zeta Reticuli, um, but what um, people don't understand down here is that they operate on a very multi-dimensional level. Like we're all multi-dimensional. We all have um, like a physical reality, mental, emotional, astral, cosmic. Um, but they're much more consciously aware of this. They're actually able to tap into a, a far greater expanse of conscious awareness than we are able to down here. Um, so, yes, they, they're operating on many different levels. They're, they're, the Zeta Reticulan ones are able to do this, and then there are others in other planetary systems who look very similar. Um, but they all tend to work together. Um, and as I say, they're down here mainly at the moment because of the planetary shift that planet Earth is is going through, has been going through for quite some time and will continue to go through, and they're assisting us with that. Now, do you feel that the Zetas that are in contact with Nancy Leader and some of these other people are the same Zetas that you're in contact, or do you think they're in contact with other types of Zetas out there? Oh, yes, there are many different types. Um, yes, they mm-hmm. certainly would not necessarily be in touch with the same group as I am. So, yes, there are many different ones. That's interesting because, you know, I know that Nancy Leader has talked about a shift, uh, an actual physical shift, and uh, also a shift in consciousness. And I was wondering if you've been told anything about a shift, a physical shift of the poles. Um, yes, no, no, no. My um, group don't teach that, actually. Um, it's more a shift in consciousness, um, as far as I understand. I know many people do believe there will be a physical shift. Um, there, there are physical happenings connected to it, but the actual shift, as far as I understand, is on a consciousness level. We're actually stepping up to the next level of consciousness on this planet. Does that have anything to do with the Mayan calendar and the date December 21st? Yes, this year? yes it has. Yes. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what I'll do, I'll, I'll just read out a, a bit of a message that my Zeta group actually gave me on this pertaining to December the 21st this year because we are approaching okay. it fairly rapidly. Um, planet Earth is in the process of stepping up or evolving to a higher vibrational frequency. This is a gradual change that has been ongoing for many years and will continue for some time yet. 
This process is accelerated at various points along the way by certain astrological alignments which act like keys or catalysts to initiate further energy boosts. The most major one of these is due to occur on the 21st of December 2012. Now, humanity also needs to evolve to a higher frequency level in order to remain in harmony with the planet. So people down here are going through quite a lot of changes and upheavals as a result of this. Um, some are making the change easily, others are not. So the, the Zetas are here, along with others from various planetary systems, to assist the process by actually helping to balance and harmonise the energies of both planet and people. And, and what people need to understand is that evolution in the human kingdom is all about making a free will choice between love and fear. Um, to, put it, to put it into Christian terms, love is like the God element and fear is the Satan element within us. So this is the choice to be made, love or fear. And fear is expressed through things like divisiveness, religious intolerance, racism, all the lower emotions, jealousy, hatred, etc., whereas love is expressed through oneness and unity, acceptance, non-judgment, etc. Um, so if people want to evolve along with their planet, then they need to choose love. Um, this in turn is a key to opening the mind to a more expanded and deeper state of conscious awareness, and this is what evolution in the human kingdom is all about. Oh, that's beautiful, beautiful, Judy. Y you know... It's interesting that you call them the guardians because I've been calling them the guardians too. I know some people say the watchers and they have other yeah. names for them, but I feel they are our guardians and they've been watching over us and guiding us. Absolutely, for sure. Um, now, it's really interesting because I wrote in my book about the number 13, which right. you have talked about 13, so tell us about the significance of 13, because I know that there was a crop circle that appeared on Milk Hill in the U.K. on August 13, 2001, yes. and I have that on my page so they can see a, a photo of it, <clears throat> and I know it's on your um, book. Yes, and that's right. Tell, tell yeah. us about that, what it means. Well, this, this was quite interesting. Um, I'll just touch on the number 13 then I'll talk a little bit more about the crop circle um, mm -hmm. no, the greys are very much into um, numerology you know like the meaning behind numbers and the number 13 stands for, for transformation it was actually used by the Mayans as, as like a base or root number of a series um, which related to astronomical cycles um, mm -hmm. and the greys sort of, um, I'll have linked into this um, for example, the examples that they gave me of number 13 being a transformation, you think of like the 12 apostles and Jesus. Jesus was the 13th one who sort of transformed the group from an ordinary human group up to a higher level. In Buddhism, there's the 12 Yaksha generals and the healing Buddha. So it's always that 13th component in the group that lifts it up to a higher vibrational frequency. And they do, they talk about energy, vibrational frequency. Everything in the universe is vibrating at a, a certain energy frequency. Um, and they can relate to this much easier than we can. And what happened with this um, crop circle? We were um, receiving a teaching on what our Zeta teacher refers to as the human ladder. And I wanted to include this, like an illustration of it, in, in the book that I was writing at the time, which is our, the Zeta message. Anyway, um, he was trying to explain this human ladder to me through Helene's daughter, Kira. And we were all having trouble um, understanding what he meant. So we just jokingly said to him, look, why don't you create a crop circle to illustrate what you're talking about? Because he kept going on about this spiral pattern. goes around in a spiral, and we couldn't understand what he meant. So anyway, not too long after we'd asked this, this crop circle was featured on on TV here as being the largest crop circle that had ever been created. And as soon as I saw it, I thought, oh, my goodness, that's the human ladder. And then at the same time, another really weird coincidence that we talk about in the Zeta Message book, another Australian man by the name of Brett Parrott was meditating in Milk Hill at the time, um, before actually the day before the circle was created. 
And he put a message out, um, look, if the crop circle um, people are real, will you create a circle for me in Milk Hill Field? Thinking that <laughs> Milk Hill Field he was meditating in. Anyway, he went back the next day and no circle in, in the field where he'd been, so he thought, oh, well, fair enough. Anyway, he was on um, <laughs> uh, the computer in the internet cafe um, and wherever he was staying you know, a day or two later and it came up about this amazing crop circle that had been created in Milk Hill Field right on the night that he'd asked for it. Oh. So he went back and investigated and it turned out Milk Hill Field was at the top of the hill, so he hadn't even looked there. Isn't that remarkable? Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's just, just incredible. We were blown away. And, and just by chance, he found our <laughs> website, contacted me, and, and he had the lovely photo that we featured on the front of the book, which I got his permission to use. <laughs> Isn't that something? Well, you know, I found that there's been many things that have happened on the 13th. It's like they've been telling us over and over, like the Phoenix Lights, which took place on March 13th, 1997, a mass UFO sighting over Phoenix, and that was on the 13th. Yeah, right. So there is something with the 13th. Oh, look, you can even go back to the um, Fatima sightings in, in when, whenever it was, was it early 1900s, I think, um, mm-hmm. that happened in, in Portugal. The, um, pic, the the vision of Our Lady that the children used to see, which I'm absolutely right. convinced was Zeta, it was on the 13th yes. of every month. Yes, and I have that in my book, too, in my, <laughs> which you, I talk yes. about, and I link the two because I do, and, and you have the 13th, so we're all getting the 13th. Do you think that some <laughs> event is going to happen on the 13th? Well, it, uh, things do tend to happen on the 13th. It'll be interesting to see the 13th of December mm-hmm. if anything happens. It will be very interesting. Um, the 21st is certainly significant because, again, three is a, is a significant number for the Zetas, so 21, mm-hmm. you know, so even that links in well. Mm-hmm. Now, that's fascinating. You know, I, I'm, <laughs> they're listening out there. Maybe they're going to have a mass UFO flyover, <laughs> and oh, then that no wonderful. one can deny it. <laughs> no, they're here. Wouldn't it? <laughs> Well, it's about time, you know. It sure um, is. <laughs> so talk about um, implants. Um, I know a lot of contactees, abductees, claim they've had implants. So do you think that's government, military, or is it the aliens putting implants into people? Okay, there's both involved here, Betsy. Um, I actually mm. have implants myself. The ones that the ETs put in, generally are not physical and they're actually put in for three reasons they they monitor our, our energy system they're actually placed in our chakra system <clears throat> our energy system to help heal and balance they can sometimes overcome health problems um by bringing the chakra system into back into balance they work a little bit like things like reiki and acupuncture and they also monitor the effects of pollution emotional states etc they can also raise our energy frequency. Um, those of us who are going up onto the disc usually have them implanted into our energy system to enable us, us to step up to um, the higher frequency. Um, also, they assist in communication um, between down here and up there, so they're like communication devices as well. Interesting. Um, I was going to ask you about the Phoenix. I know Betty Andresen Luca in the book The Watchers by Raymond Fowler talks about the phoenix that she was shown by the Zetas. And I was wondering if you've ever seen anything or had any feeling about the phoenix, the legendary phoenix bird. Yes, no, I, I, I know about it. I haven't actually been shown that myself, but the phoenix actually uh, represents reincarnation and spiritual growth, um, mm-hmm. and that was the, the the teaching that they were trying to get across back then. Um, because, it, like we, of course, we all reincarnate on a on an, an individual personal level, but the planet is going through a similar thing, and that's part of what the shift is about. It's like a rebirth of the planet to a higher level. Um, so I, I think probably why they showed them that. I know Betty and um, um, Barney were 
a couple of or well, first ones I became aware of like consciously aware of being taken up on the disc. They were certainly right. one of the first ones. Um, right. So they were starting the, the Zetas were starting to get cr- these messages across back then. Um, whether people understand them or not is the other matter. But <laughs> that's another matter. But at least they were trying to get messages across. Do you think that there's millions of people out there that have been abducted or uh, contacted? Oh, oh yes, many, 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 many thousands, if not millions because they really are trying to get through to people at this point to help us to step up. They want us to wake up, don't they, Judy? <laughs> oh, they sure do. <laughs> and funnily enough, that's the message that's been given to many, many contactees. You know, it's time for you to wake up. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, right, right. Now, have they helped us with, you know, um, warning us about disasters? Can they see into the future or time travel, as we call it. I, I, I know there's really no time, but have they prevented certain things from happening on Earth? Yes, they have. Um, the group that I work with are not into making predictions. They're not very um, keen on all these predictions of gloom and doom that have been put out, because as they always explain, we create our own crea- uh, reality. So if we're given these warnings of of fearful things that are going to happen, people start worrying and they can very well create these things to, you know, cause them to happen. So they're not into that. But at the same time, there's a whole surveillance system up on the disks that keeps an eye on things that are going on down here. And where they're allowed to intervene, they will. They can't always do it because, of course, karma is involved. Um, and, and there's very, very strict rules about interfering in a planetary um, um, sort of happening. But at the same time, if they can, they will. Well, great. Um, I know there's someone holding that is really anxious to ask you a question. Would you mind taking a question from a caller? No, that's fine. Okay, great. Let, let's go to this caller. Hi, caller. You're on the air with Judy and Betsy. Do you have a question for Judy tonight? Yeah, uh, Judy, um, I was just wondering, are you, are you uh, taking second questions? Am I? Sorry, I'm, I just missed are that. You taking, you just are speak you up? Uh, taking, answering psychic questions? Um, I, I suppose try me. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I, don't, I don't give psychic readings, but... Oh, I see. Well, I went in yeah. for um, for a, um, a job interview uh, today. It was a company I worked for a couple months ago. Caller, excuse me. Um, this isn't about psychic readings tonight. If you have a question for Judy about the Zetas or um, anything oh, like that, about the aliens, then you know we'll, we'll take that question. But if not, no. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> no, I'm not you have the wrong show tonight. <laughs> I guess he was confused. I don't know. I guess he didn't read the information. Oh well. Okay. Never mind. On with the next it, it was question. A good here. Try. <laughs> it was. Uh, <laughs> um, now I know that a lot of people that have been abducted um, have see owls, and I know that you talked about owls. So have what? Why did they give us screen memories? Um, to to try to um, protect us a little bit from memories that we wouldn't necessarily be able to um, process with our human brains the way they are at this level. Uh, mm. it, it's, it's sort of a protection against trauma, but I do realise at the same time a lot of people do get very scared by it. But yes, it is a protection. Um, sometimes the Zetas put them in place, sometimes we put them in place ourselves but it is really to protect us from realities that's a little bit beyond our grasp at this stage. And I imagine that's why so many people are fearful of them. Um, It's just not in their reality, and to see something like them is just maybe a shock to the system. But I understand that we have made a soul connection before coming into this lifetime that we, we were going to connect with them, right, like you have. Yes. Yes, that's exactly right, exactly right. So do we reincarnate as Zetas, or can they reincarnate as humans? 
Okay, well, look, what, to answer this question, um, Betsy, I'll just explain a little bit about the human ladder because this is actually the okay. path of evolution that humans follow through the universe. It's a term that the Zetas use for this path or cycle of evolution um, that all human-type beings um, follow through the universe. It's comprised of ten what the Zetas call galactic levels. And this really confused me at first because I thought, no, there's more than ten galaxies in the universe. You know, explain, mm -hmm. explain. Um, so, of course, my Zeta teacher, as he always did, told me, you know the answer, look within. Anyway, it turned out that they're not galaxies or physical places as such. What they are are ascending levels of expanding conscious awareness. Now, Earth humans are on the first rung, so we're able to access approximately 10% of our potential conscious awareness. All the rest is sort of hidden away in subconscious and superconscious. Um, and, and this is the word I emphasize, conscious. This is the key to where we're evolving as humans. This is also tied in with the 10% or so of our active DNA. Now, as we progress up through the 10 levels over the span of many lives, more and more DNA is activated, um, which will then enable us to consciously access and perceive higher energy frequencies. Um, and in other words, we'll be consciously aware of higher frequencies just as now we're consciously aware of third dimensional reality in which we operate here on Earth. Now the Zetas are on levels 5 to 8, so they're able to access mm -hmm. about 50 to 80% of their conscious awareness. So yes, they have. They've come up through human type <coughs> planetary um, uh, cultures just as we're living here. So yes, many of them have been here, done that. Many have been humans in past lives. Certainly, mm, interesting. Certainly, maybe not on Earth, but certainly on other planets. Well, since we're we're babies in kindergarten, kindergarten, and maybe even <laughs> worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> so, can we jump after we die? Can we jump into another um, alien existence? Or do we have to stay on Earth for a few more cycles before we get well, it right? <laughs> it depends on where we are. If, if we've been through quite a lot of human cycles here, <laughs> we can certainly. Um, but many of us do um, have lives on other planets as well. It, it's important for people mm -hmm. to understand this. We are multidimensional and we're not, like the life we're living here isn't the only life we're living. Our higher self is like a diamond that has oh, probably about 10 facets. Um, so we can p potentially be living about 10 different lives at the same time. I know this is really hard to explain in third dimensional right. language, but it, w we possibly can be sharing other lives with um, you know, an, an, an ET existence as well. Interesting, because I, I've read books that people talk about that. We, we are on many levels, um, and we're not aware of it, um, because we're focused in this reality at this time. But um, yeah. just the thought of that is very confusing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I wonder if, if we can um, also, if the past is going on, and, of course, we think we're in the present, which really isn't the present. You know, it could be the future. <laughs> it could be the past. So <laughs> I would think that all these... All realities are going on at the same time which is really confusing you know it can oh, be just so mind-boggling yeah. <laughs> it, it is it is it's no wonder that the zetas are going very gently down here because truly it would be almost it would almost explain explode the human mind to try to, mm -hmm. it to does try to well, yeah it's, it, it is mind-blowing for sure it is it is mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very aware of this betty because um when i'm up on the disc um, operating as a Zeta, I'm aware of much more conscious knowledge and input than I can possibly bring back down here. So it's like when I come back down here, it's like I get a bag put over my head or something no, and I can't no. actually access it. And so it's sort of on the edge of my mind, like you know when you have a dream and you just can't quite bring it back, although sometimes I can. Um, but yes, it's just, it's, it is mind-blowing. There's no way a human brain could cope with all that input. Now, you have a teacher, right? Now, is he the one that wears the black cape and, and large brim hat? Yes, he does. He certainly Why does. does. He Sometimes do he wears the <laughs> <laughs> It seems a little comical, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. <laughs> but the, 
Yeah, oh, it, it's a wonderful experience to connect with him. I've, I've had that experience a couple of times, and it is just, oh, it's beyond words. The, the depth of love that you feel with these beings is just incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know a lot of people have trouble looking into the Zeta's eyes because the Zeta's eyes, like, uh, they're like a mirror to the human soul. But when you have a connection with one of them, the depth of love in those eyes is just amazing. I remember on one occasion him putting his arms around me and actually wrapping me in the black cape, and oh, it was just incredible. Oh, I just burst into tears. It was it was so wow. amazing. Wow. I remember peeling my eyes out on his on his shoulder, <laughs> hoping I wasn't getting his cape all wet. <laughs> now I know many people have said that they're emotionless, but you sound like they have a great sense of humor. Oh, they do. Now they have a, a wonderful sense of humor. Um, People, again, we're talking about energy here. Emotion is energy. And people down here have trouble linking into um, the Zeta emotional energy frequency. They they don't suffer emotion like we do down here. I mean, they're a little bit like some of the Eastern adepts who've learned to completely non-attach. So, yes, they are emotionless in a way, but at the same mm-hmm. time there's an incredible depth of love there as well. Now, how about the hybrids? Because we hear a lot about the hybrids, and and once in a while a human mother gets to see the hybrid child that she helped produce, and is there still that bond? It sounds like there's that bond between the mother and child, but but how heartbreaking that they're separated. Talk about that and, and what they're doing with the hybrids. Yes, well, what they what they're doing, they are assisting physically in the upgrade of the human race um, because we need to have our DNA upgraded um, f- for this um, expansion of consciousness to come about. So yes, there there is like an upgrade going on, um, mixing their genetics in with ours. And I mean, they, they've been doing this for, for millions of years. I mean, it was the Zetas um, along with some of the other ET groups who came here who basically assisted the human race to evolve from the animal kingdom. Um, on a physical level as well as well as a spiritual level so it's our, basically our next step up in evolution and um, some have more Zeta genetics in their makeup than others like some can live down here quite comfortably mm-hmm. others can't um, the ones that can't they, they need to be kept up on the disc otherwise they wouldn't survive so will the hybrids any of the hybrids be integrated into our world in our physical world or are they just going to stay maybe on an astral plane well they will be integrated um of course mm-hmm. planet earth the way it is at the moment they wouldn't be able to handle it down here with all the um, negative energy that's around but well, we can barely handle planet. it can we <laughs> we can barely handle it. exactly yeah. exactly and and they're just so much more sensitive than we are so um, hopefully when the planet um, eventually steps up to the next, you know, they talk about stepping up from fourth world to fifth world um, consciousness, then yes, so certainly they'll be able to survive down here. Um, meantime, the mothers are taken up onto the disks to um, stay in contact with them. Now, are these hybrids loved by the Zetas? I, I imagine they are, but they don't seem to have the emotion. So does that affect the hybrids, do you think? Not really, because um, yes, they are. They're absolutely cherished up there, because um, you know it's it's like establishing a new race, and there's part of Earth human, part of the Zetas in them. So yes, they are loved very, very much, and, and cared for and protected. Um, the ones who are living down here on planet Earth are very aware of protection around them the whole time. Same with the ones up on the disc. Um, and again, there is emotion there, but it's vibrating at a different frequency, and this is why people often can't perceive it when they're taken up onto the disc. No, I know many people have said that perhaps these Zetas have evolved beyond emotion, and the reason they're creating these hybrids is because they want the human emotion back, feelings and emotion. Do you think that's true? It, it may have been with one group. Um, I'm not exactly sure about that, um, but as far as I understand, mm-hmm. in the majority of cases, no, it's to try to raise the human emotion to higher levels. As I say, they're rather mm-hmm. like um, these um, adepts in the East who, who <coughs> have learned what they refer to as non-attachment, like non-attachment to emotion. 
And because planet Earth is, is such an emotional planet in a negative way, there's so much anger and fear and things going on, um, at, you know, being proven by all the wars going on. So there, it really is to try and raise human emotion to a higher frequency and, and teach people. It's basically Jesus' teaching of turn the other cheek. I mean, they've, they've mastered that to a very, very high level. Mm, incredible. Wow, how beautiful. Now, um, is... Now, I know you talk about God consciousness, and they have related to you what the God consciousness is. So if there's a God, is there a Satan out there, someone evil? The Satan element is more the fear within ourselves. God, mm-hmm. God is an energy. What the what the, the um, Zetas and many, many other ETs refer to God, they refer to God as source or oneness. And um, as to my understanding... It's uh, like an energy, uh, an energy form that is permeating the whole universe, and it's a creation, a, like a creational type energy, creative energy, which permeates the whole universe and, and gives life to everything. Basically, um, we all carry this energy within ourselves, so this is why we're taught that we have God within. Um, it's the same consciousness that permeates every living being in the universe. And so it's not, you know, one God for this group and one God for that group. It's the same God energy that permeates all of us. And it's like an energy stream or a consciousness stream that flows through the whole universe. That's so beautiful. Uh, Just beautiful explanation. (laughs) Um, I, I see there's someone on the switchboard that has their hand up for a question, and I hope this isn't for a psychic reading. Maybe you're going to have to start giving psychic reading. So, do you mind? Let's see if they have a legit question for you yep, here. That's that's fine, Betsy. Hi, caller. You're on the air with Judy and Betsy. Do you have a question tonight for Judy? Oh, hi. Good evening, Betsy. Good evening, Judy. Um, I have listened to you many times in many other shows, and now I like a channeling message. <laughs> well, thank you for calling. No, no, no. <laughs> You're very polite. But, uh, I do have, um, actually, it's um, maybe you could answer what I'm going through at night. Uh, you, uh, Judy. You have many, you know, it's been your lifetime of experiences where at night you go to work with the Zetas. I know at night I go to work with um, a Palladi- with the Palladians. I guess I'm a Pallady, I was told, and I volunteer. I volunteer uh-huh. to go at night in the spaceships and to help, you know, what's going on, many projects with Mother Earth. And um, I also belong to a prayer group in which... We meditate for Mother Earth so she can heal. I like, uh, you know, I never had confirmation. kind of did. If that's really happening to me, because sometimes I'm like, I never remember. If you could help me remember my dreams, there's like something I can do. Because sometimes I do. I have yeah. seen a long spaceship. Yeah, look, what what I always um, advise people is to do some sort of spiritual practice of some sort. Meditate, um, take up Reiki, take up yoga, some sort of spiritual practice. Because what that does, it raises your vibrational frequency, which sort of opens the phone lines, to put it into earth terms. I have another question. Because right now, and this is like I'm coming to talk about higher vibrations on my own. I'm figuring things out. So one of the things I know now, I know I got some kind of message. We're all multidimensional. That was like a couple months ago, and I've been like in tune with that. And so now a lot of things start, you know, like my brain starts to work in a different way. So if we're multidimensional, I'm asking my higher self to give me the essence of my multidimensional self with my higher self so I can raise my vibration. Is that a correct way of asking of uh, my vibration? Yeah, the more more you can link into your higher self, the higher vibrational frequency you'll begin to operate on. So, yeah, by linking into the higher self. See, you're you're a facet of the higher self. So by linking into the, the whole through meditation, through spiritual practice, will enable you to link in more clearly. 
Well, um, will I be able during my um, I guess day time? Will I ever be able to uh, talk to them or even visit the spaceship, like for a moment? Because I know sometimes they take you out for what well, yeah. was the moment. It might be a week. Have I gone yeah. through that already? Because I've noticed yeah. that in the summer there was some gaps in time where I felt like. Hey, I've been somewhere, and then I look at the time. It's only been a minute, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I, well, I can't really say that. You know, it's really up to up to the ones that you're working with. Um, you, they might surprise you one night. If you just keep putting it out there that you would like a conscious experience, that's what I would oh, do. Thank you. You're very helpful. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> Carla. Good luck. <laughs> you're so helpful. And you're asking, I mean, you're you're just laying out everything we need to know. And I thank you for helping us and for giving us so much love with it. You know, like, it's true, like, uh, if you look at history and the way we proceed, um, not only the grace, but other civilizations too, you know, galactic civilizations, not necessarily positive. But you have changed that. I want to let you know because I heard the grace being, like, to be scared, you know, for a long time. I was. Like, I, I wouldn't even open up the book. You, mm, mm. you on Block Talk Radio, this is the truth, Judy. I was listening to you on Block Talk Radio this year. And you gave right. <laughs> so much love. That's fantastic. And you gave oh, the thank truth. You. And, oh, my gosh. You, you, you're helping many, many people. And I thank you. And I thank the Zetas for being with us during this, uh, you know, process that Mother Earth is going through in humanity. Thank you. <laughs> I always say thank you to my family and friends every day. And I know the Zetas are our cosmic friends to everybody. You know, they're here to help all of us. So I thank, the, you know, I thank our star brothers and sisters and family all the time, every single day, twice a day. <laughs> thank you, Judy, for all the work you do. No worries. Well, thank, thank you for sharing that with us, caller. That's lovely, oh. lovely. Have a great evening. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Have a look. Judy, that's interesting, isn't it? You know, I I think so many other people out there, probably millions and millions of people, are just waking up to this incredible uh, energy and and this love that's coming through, and we're all starting to wake up from our our comas out there. (laughs) (laughs) That's exactly what it's like, Betsy. It's like everyone is in a coma. It really is. (laughs) It is. You know, in your book you talked about some healings that you and Helene experienced. Talk about that. Uh, what was that, healings, did, did you say? Yes, healings, uh-huh. Yes, yes. Um, Helene um, is a real touchy-feely person. She can always feel when they're around. Um, she's had some amazing experiences. I remember, I don't know if she, um, I don't think we mentioned it in the book, but, oh, Maybe, I can't quite remember. <laughs> I've got to go back and read it again. Um, <clears throat> she was actually having some ser- fairly serious neck problems. She she put a um, mm-hmm. bone out and up near her neck somewhere. And oh, she was in a lot of pain and getting headaches and things. And she went to the doctor and was told that she needed to go to um, like a chiropractor or something to get it back put back in place. And she's a real chicken with anything like that. So she lay down to give herself some Reiki. And as, as we always do, we ask the the Zeta family to come in and help so she specifically said look you know can you come in and help me with this neck anyway the next thing she actually felt them grab her head and and sort of click it back into place it was quite tangible um and um she was fine when she got up off the bed and she was fine I've actually had them come in also and help me with Reiki treatments. I remember I was treating someone once on the Reiki table and um, this person started leaving their body and um, becoming frightened. They didn't realize what was going on. And my Zeta teacher, Maris, came in and actually grabbed their ankles, pulled them down onto the bed and anchored them down for the rest of the treatment. And um, when, wow. uh, they finished, uh, when they came out of the treatment, they said, oh, I could feel these long, thin fingers holding onto my ankles. Oh, it made me feel so lovely and safe and secure. <laughs> wow, <laughs> isn't that incredible? Wow. Just, just lovely. Now, how do we know if it's angels that are uh, coming through, spirit guides, or the Zetas? How, how do we tell? <laughs> 
Oh, look, it's a matter of getting used to the energy frequencies. Um, <clears throat> the highly evolved Zetas are very hard to pick between them and the angels because they're right up there, almost up there with the angels. They, their energy is just amazing. So, it, yeah, it's pretty hard to, to tell which is which until you get used to it. The Zetas tend to come in <coughs> with a cold energy. Um, we're always aware when they're around their energy is freezing cold. Hmm. Are they... Uh tricksters or hoaxers do, do they pull little tricks on people <laughs> oh only gently um they would never do it in a hurting way they they mm-hmm. will joke they've got a wonderful sense of humor um so yes they do in a way but as far as doing it in a in a in a sort of a negative way no they wouldn't do that but they will they will play little jokes just to make you realize that they're around they'll do things like that <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was wondering. <laughs> you know, I, I've had many, many dreams of being in school, and I feel that I'm being taught on a higher level, and I don't really mi- remember in the morning what I'm being taught. Are a lot of people getting that information through dreams? Yes, they are, Betsy, yes. A lot of people go up on the discs for that reason. They're actually classrooms up there. They're a little bit like, they're not like your, your um, I don't know what it's like in the U.S., but here in primary school um, we have like the classroom with all the desks, but in university the, the desks are sort of tiered up um, sort of from the high at the back coming down to the low at the front, and that's what the ones up on the disc are like. They're like a sort of university lecture hall as opposed to a classroom, and many, many people are being taken up for these classes. Ah, good, good. Yeah. <laughs> well, I yeah. think it's helping. I really do. And <laughs> are any of these Zetas working with the military? Because uh, we, we've heard rumors that they're working with the military, the governments. Are, are they working in secret with them? No, they're not. They're not. There's uh, another group here who are trying to make people believe that the Zetas are, but the genuine Zetas are not. No way. Interesting. You know, I I did a lot of research on the cattle mutilations, and I know you've had them over there as well as, you know, all over the world. And I don't believe it's the Zetas for one minute. I think it's government testing or military. What do you think? Yes, 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 it is. Um, They are being assisted by um, another ET-type group, but this group, I don't even like to think of them as ETs because they've been down here for so long. So, as I say to people, it's all coming from down here, all that negative stuff. There's a lot of lower astral plane um, stuff going on too, lower astral plane interference. They will actually appear as Zetas. They're like shapeshifters and they can pretend to be Zetas, but the eye shape doesn't it never looks quite right. Interesting. Well, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Where, where do you see us in the next few years? Do, do you think there's going to be a mass UFO sighting, um, you know, around the world? Are they going to increase the UFO sightings? Uh, will there be disclosure by governments? What do you think? And what are Look, you I'm really getting hoping, from them? I'm really hoping that all this happens. Um, even upstairs, they're not quite making decisions yet because they're still just standing back to see where people go down here. It will really depend on this the shift from fourth world to fifth world consciousness, how long that takes to, to, to move through. Um, so it really it really hinges on what happens down here as to how much they're going to show themselves. Um, government disclosure, well, you know, who knows with the government? <laughs> oh, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think we can depend on them, can we, Judy? <laughs> say that NASA never a straight answer <laughs> no now talk about the star children now we've just got a few more minutes here but I, I know that you talked about star children who are they and what is their mission yes well the star children are human children who are being given a higher percentage of um, um, ET genetics to again assist in uh, expanding their DNA and raising their vibrational frequency um, <clears throat> so they're sort of the new generation of humans that are being born down here now, hopefully, that will change mm-hmm. things to a more peaceful world. And they start coming into the world in the 1980s, was it? Yes, yes, that's how I've heard. Yes, they started coming in about the 1980s. 
Um, mm-hmm. Some researchers have said that every child born since the 1980s is a star child. I don't quite go along with that. I think it's more gradual, um, but certainly there are more and more being born. You know, I, I've seen some of these children, and they're just amazing. They are psychic. They're uh, just so intuitive. They're so loving. They know what their mission is in life. Um, sometimes mm. they are prodigies in certain areas, math, um, music, but uh, they're just so gifted. Aren't they just yes. amazing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yes, so it'll make so a lovely future generation for planet Earth, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Oh, how beautiful. Well, I'm glad they're here. And Judy, I'm glad you're here, and you wrote that beautiful book. <laughs> oh, thanks. That's it. I'm glad you are as well. <laughs> well, well, thank it's you. Oh, it's, been, word out there. <laughs> it's so wonderful having you on the show. Would you give out all your information, your website and contact information? Uh, yes, for sure. We've actually got two websites. Um, we have one, ufograyinfo.com, and that's grey spelled with an E. I'll just say that again, ufograyinfo.com. And we also have one more dedicated to the books, which is thezetamessage.com. And oh, we have two books, two books out at the moment, The Zeta Message and Human by Day, Zeta by Night. Both available on Amazon and as ebooks through Kindle, published by Granite Publishing, Wildflower Press. Oh, great! Do you have any plans to travel to the U.S. this year or next? Oh, look, we would love to. Um, we'll just have to see how things go, um, because of course, you know, you've got to pay out quite a bit to do that. We can't just jump right. onto a disc, unfortunately. But we would certainly love to come over there at some stage. Do you do any conferences? Um, we, they should get you over here well, for a here, conference. Here, <laughs> here in Australia, we hardly have any. We haven't really had a conference since about 19, um, uh, 2004. Sorry, 2004, I think, the last conference. Really? Was. Um, so, yeah, we, we hardly have anything like that here at all. Hmm. Um, people, we, we actually have um, a series of YouTube clips. If people would like to see us in person, Helene and I made a series of YouTube clips um, that can be accessed on YouTube Zeta Message, um, where we we've done a bit of a, like a question and answer type format. Right, and, right. Uh, I watched that. It, it's very informative. It's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, do you think that there's more interest in UFOs and ETs in the U.S. than Australia, or is it just <laughs> people yes, are afraid I to? There, I, I think there is. Um, the thing is, there's a far greater population over there. Um, so I, I just heard they had, I was watching a quiz on TV the other night, and they said that by the latest survey, we have three people per square kilometre population in Australia. So we haven't got a very big population. Um, compared right. to, say, the U.S. So, you know, that's the problem here. And there's just not the interest in it. Have you had a lot of UFO sightings this year? Yes, there know? have been. Um, apparently there's been a lot in the Northern Territory. Seems to be a bit of a hot spot there. Wow. I think they have been all around the world. No, there have. They've really increased. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, they're here, everybody, absolutely, and um, they do have a message of love for us. And Judy.